morning. Happy Daylight Saving Times. Welcome to this second Sunday in March of 2021 worship to our Wesley worship experience. For those of you who are first time guests or you are not yet officially a part of the Wesley family, my name is Reverend Tiffany and I'm the pastor of Wesley United Methodist Church. We hope that this worship service will be a blessing to you. A couple of announcements I wanna lift up for the good uh, of our community. One is I wanna remind those of you who who received the bulletin to please make sure you open it, read all of our announcements. There are varying things that are happening uh, in the life of our church, and we want you to be in the know and to make sure you put those dates on your calendars so that you can actively participate in all that's happening uh, in the life uh, of our church. A couple of other things that I do want to make sure that I mentioned to you is that last Sunday, you might remember, our Young Adult Sunday School class is challenging each of you as members of our congregation to join them and providing uh, donations to victims of the Texas winter storm that happened uh, last month. And so we do ask that if you uh, are willing to please make sure you make a donation, you can do that by going to our giving link uh, on our online giving uh, church app, or you can go to our website go to get connected and then in the drop down menu, click on giving and you can give there. There's a line item that says storm relief. All the money that are collected will go uh, to help make sure that um, particularly areas that are serving uh, poor persons, particularly those who are in black and brown communities, making sure that they have uh, running water in their communities and that all other plumbing issues are being dealt with, uh, particularly for those who have many issues with wet walls and wet ceilings. So we do ask that you would give and that you would give uh, generously. In addition, I want to remind all of our business leaders and owners uh, next Sunday, third Sunday during live Zoom worship, we're going to have a special time of prayer for you all. So we invite you to be present uh, during live worship as we pray for you and your businesses, particularly during um, this season and this time of pandemic. Lots of other announcements are in our bulletin, so please make sure you read them. Also, visit our website. Lots of uh, uh, information about activity that's going on in the church is there. Uh, WesleyChurchSC.com. WesleyChurchSC.com. Visit that website and uh, you will hear more about what's happening in the life of our church. Morning. Let us pray. Again, Father, we're coming thanking you. We thank you for the gift of the day. We thank you for the continued blessings that you give us. We pray for the caregivers, Father. We pray for those who are hungry, who went to bed, sleep last night hungry, and woke up this morning hungry. We pray for those who slept under your stars and the church family of Wesley. Father, we pray for the elected and appointed officials of this world. And as we go forth in this world, Father, may they see you through our words, our actions, and our motivations. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Wesley's virtual worship service. My name is Laverne Irving, and I first started attending Wesley about 72 years ago. I was one of the children that Miss Beulah Baxley used to gather from the old neighborhood that was down the hill from the church. Whenever I would come home for a visit, I would return to Wesley, and when we finally settled down, and, made, and came back home and settled down, I returned to Wesley. What's always brought me back is the people. The members of Wesley are friendly, they're loving, they're supportive, and it's as wonderful here as an adult as, as it was when I was a child. My name is Laurel Irving, and I joined Wesley 1985 after returning home. I came to Wesley and joined my family so we could have a family church. And it's been a wonderful experience for the last umpteen years. If you want to connect with us, you can connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on our website at wesleychurchsc.com. And at the corner of Jerva and Bonwell Streets, we say, Shalom, Shalom y'all.
invite you now to bow with me uh, for uh, a word of prayer. And then we're going to move directly into hearing um, our sermon and hearing from God this morning. Please bow with me. God, we love you with all that we are and all that we ever hope to be. We thank you so much for this day and for this opportunity to stop and to pause and to call on your name, Holy Ghost, and know that you're with us and that you promise to never leave us or forsake us. We pray special prayers, oh God, continuously for those who find themselves on the front lines of this pandemic. We pray for our healthcare workers, Lord Jesus. We pray for those who are battling this virus, oh God, those who are sick in their bodies, Lord Jesus. We pray, oh God, for those who are uh, administering vaccines, the companies that are making these vaccines. We thank you, God, so much for every shot that is gone in every arm thus far. And, and God, we just thank you for the hope of this vaccine, even as there are many who are a bit frustrated and discouraged, oh God, as they are seeking to get appointments. We trust and we believe that if a person wants a vaccine, that they will be able um, to receive it. And so, God, for that, we say thank you. God, we pray special prayers this day for those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray, God, that you would heal uh, broken hearts, oh God, that you would help those who grieve, Lord Jesus. We pray, oh God, for those who may be suffering, God, things that are not related to the pandemic or to death in any way, God. Things, oh God, that just have them frustrated and anxious and not knowing exactly what to do. We know that there are many who are at the end of the ropes. We pray for those who are dealing with mental health issues oh God, and just asking you, Lord God, to, to lead and guide your people, God. Help us to make wise choices and wise decisions. We continue to pray for our church. We pray, God, that we would be a place that is a beacon of hope and a place, oh God, uh, of and also a beacon of light in a world that is often dark and dying. Use us to and for your glory. We love you, we honor you, we praise you. And now, oh God, we pray also that you would bless this preached word, Lord Jesus. We pray, God, that it will go forth and that it shall never return back void. We pray, still understanding, that lest the preacher comes, there can be no preaching in this place. So come on, Holy Ghost, and have thine own way. Speak, Lord. For we, your people, are listening. Speak, Lord. We, your people, are listening. We pray this prayer and all of our prayers in the strong, strong name of Christ. And we, as your sons and your daughters, we say amen, amen, and amen, amen. So I want to read to us this morning from the gospel according to John, John the fifth chapter. And I'm going to read verses one through ten. John, John, the fifth chapter, verses one through 10. Sometimes later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate, a pool, which is Aramaic, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed. One who has been there was an invalid who had been there for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, Someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leader said to the man who had been healed, it is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, we continue our Lenten sermon series that is entitled Restored, Finding Redemption in Our Mess. We opened the series a few weeks ago, admitting that life is a mess. And simultaneously, we, 
are a mess. Noting that our messiness is often rooted in our motivations. We asked and we continue to ask the question, are you Christian motivated? Are your efforts, your appearances, the things you do, are they about you or are they about God? When we ask these type questions, we learn more about ourselves. And often when we learn about ourselves, we draw closer to God. When we draw closer to God, our sin becomes clearer. Last week, we looked to the story of Zacchaeus, noting that he climbs up a sycamore tree to literally look for and to look at Jesus. Zacchaeus is, is spiritually looking for something or perhaps someone. He's looking for something or someone more than his life of exploitation and wealth has gotten him. And as he is looking at Jesus, scripture says that Jesus looks up and Jesus says to Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. I need to go to your house. Like Zacchaeus, God is looking for you. God is pursuing you. God wants to come to your house. Y'all, we are the ones that are lost. And it is God that finds us, not the other way around. You don't find God. God finds you. It is always God that initiates. It is always, always God's relentless grace, God's persistent mercy, God's never ending love that finds us, that meets us, that tells us to come down from the sycamore tree in all of our messiness, accept the invitation and invite salvation into your house. Today, Today, as we continue in our series, I want you to know that I have been inspired and I have been intrigued by the sermons of a pastor from Texas named Andrew Payne, who has preached this series and has shared his perspective on the messiness of life and the messes that we live in and live through. In one of his sermons, he talks a bit about what it means that as a new parent or even a parent of young children and perhaps even at other times, you may have to revise your expectations around a clean house. Revise your expectations around a neat and an orderly living room. He says that at times you just have to learn to keep the chaos at bay. It's chaos, y'all. Chaos exists, yet you have to work to keep the chaos from taking over your life. I know that Kareem and I, we have to work at this. Sometimes I look at a house and I am like nobody. And I mean absolutely nobody else better buy Caleb another toy. We can hardly walk. And because Caleb is exploring and is super active, it seems as soon as we clean up, the mess comes right back over and over and over again. However, pain, he challenges us. He challenges us to understand that even if and when we, we shift our expectations and we are successful at keeping the, the chaos at bay, sometimes, sometimes the mess just isn't or can't be held back. Sometimes things, big things, they intrude upon us. The mess knocks on our door and, and we have no choice but to let it in or perhaps it pushes. It pushes itself in and, and we have no choice but to deal with it. 
There are times when life intrudes, harshness intrudes, mess is everywhere, and we we find ourselves having to to pick up the pieces, having to, to figure out what do we do now. You discover that your 16-year-old is pregnant. You learn that your wife has, has been unfaithful. There are cutbacks and your job is the one that is being eliminated. A colleague of mine and, and friend of many all over the United Methodist denomination, Reverend Junius Dotson, 55 years old, learned in December of 2020 that he had pancreatic cancer that had begun to metastasize to his liver. He shared it with the church, the larger denomination, on January the 29th of this year. And by my birthday, in fact, I got a text on my birthday morning, on February the 25th, Junius was dead. I watched his celebration of life, not yesterday, but last Saturday, and I still grieve and, 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 and try to live into the moments of disbelief that I have that this has happened. This vibrant and intelligent young man of God, general secretary of discipleship for the United Methodist Church is gone. The mess, the mess of life intruded in a way that no one ever expected. And y'all, when this happens, when this happens, we have to ask, how do we understand a relationship, our relationship to a good and loving God when mess and messiness surrounds us? Sometimes, sometimes we think such things only happen to other people. Sometimes we don't want to have conversation about the hard and difficult and intrusive stuff of life that other people have had to deal with, that other people are dealing with until it knocks on our door. As I look at our text for today, this man has been lame for 38 years. He has been living with the messiness of sickness. Can you imagine how many times he prayed to be healed? How many times he thought, well, maybe today, today will be the day and somebody was going to help me get into that water. Can you imagine how many people walked over him or, or got ahead of him to go and sit in the water? How many people perhaps even pushed him out of the way so that they could get their healing and their blessing? I wonder, I wonder this morning, what does faith look like when you are a mess and your life is a mess and your life is something that people don't really want to talk about? Sometimes as people of faith, we put blinders on and, and we don't want to see particular parts of life. We don't want to deal with, perhaps we don't know how to deal with the fact that though this man prayed, though he sat by the pool all those years, God does not just come in and wipe away or erase 38 years of lameness. God did not sweep in and erase Junius's cancer. Somebody is 16 and they're going to have that baby. Somebody else has been or, or will go through a painful divorce. And somebody else is looking for work even as I speak these very words this morning. Y'all, we cannot have a faith that does not see the mess or, or acts like we don't see it. We have to ask the question, what does it mean that Christ is Lord? And yet there is so much mess. The gospel has to be able to say something to the broken, 
The gospel has to be able to say something to the lame, to those who have been suffering for 38 years, and to those that just got diagnosed in December and death is knocking on the door in February. Now, I admit, sometimes, sometimes it is hard it is difficult. It, it is the, the most incredulous thing. And the enemy would have for me to believe differently. But I don't believe that God is the author or the creator of mess. Or any of the messiness that invades our lives. God did not make that man lame. And God did not give Junius cancer. And yet... There are those that would say, but why didn't? Why does God not do something about such things? And I don't know that I have a perfect or a good enough answer for you today. And I know that we can believe that there is no healing, but I also know that we can believe in the God that cares for those who are suffering. We can believe that God does not always move the mountain, but helps us to climb the mountain. We can believe that God, the God that sees and that knows every one of our brokenness, the God that doesn't always come in, as I said, and move the mountain, but helps us to climb it. The God that hears the cries of the needy, the God that sent his only begotten son, we can believe that God is with us as we face our mess, our calamity. Pastor Andrew Payne reminds me that God cries with us, that God knows our pain and calls us to a life that says, I will follow. I will follow him to the cross. Payne says at the center of our story, we ought to remember that at the center of the Christian story is a man that was not liked and loved by everyone. A man who was not always the person that people doted on, but instead Jesus was an innocent man, a selfless man that was killed, y'all. Hear that truth, an innocent, selfless man that was killed, that was murdered because this world did not and does not always know that he is salvation. And yet his death, his death is not the end of the story. When mess comes, when it intrudes, when it shakes us to our very core, there will be and there is darkness. And yet Jesus is the bright and shining light that overcomes and overshadows the darkness of this life. During Junius' celebration of life, his partner spoke and she said, that it was in the wee hours of the night. I imagine that his body was suffering. I hope that he was given medication to help with pain. They were on a, a Zoom call as he was in the hospital. And he said to her, three days, y'all, three days before his death, he said to her, God, can be trusted. God can be trusted. I have no idea what the conversation was between Junius and God. I have no idea what the Holy Ghost said, but I know it does something to me this morning. I know that it feeds my soul to hear that a dying man, one whose body is failing him, one who I believe knew that his earthly journey was coming to an end, he muttered the words, God can be trusted. God can be trusted. Y'all, those words, those words supersede the mess and the messiness of this life. Such words are a burst of light in a dark and dying world. Such words are the faith of a man that says, I'm going all the way with the Lord. There is no turning back. I've drawn the line in the sand and I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Hallelujah this morning. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Life, y'all. Life is messy. Life is messy, 
intrudes harshly. And yet Jesus, Jesus is always the bright and morning star. Jesus will always burst through the darkness and illumine our paths. And illumine our paths. So praise be to God for the testimony of a man who is dealing with the messiness of life. A man named Julius Dotson who said, God can be trusted. God can be trusted. In the name of the creator and of the redeemer and of the sustainer. People of God shall say amen. Amen. And amen. The doors of God's church are open this morning. And they're open not because I say so or because any preacher says so. But the doors of God's church are open because God can be trusted, y'all. Because even though mess may surround us, even though some of us have, may have been living in mess for 38 years, God can be trusted. Jesus is the God that breaks forth and bursts into the dark and is a shining light. Is a shining light. The doors of God's church are open. And what that means is that if you're tired of doing it your way, if you know that mess is surrounding you and you've done your best to keep it at bay, but it keeps tr coming in more and more, I want to... I want to challenge you to try Jesus. I want to challenge you to give it all to God, not believing that God always comes in and swipe, wipes it all away, but instead that God walks with you. God talks with you. God reminds you that he's with you and that he will never leave you or forsake you. That God is the God that may not move the mountain, but he is the God or she is the God, whatever you want to refer to God as. God is the one who will help you climb that mountain. I want you to know today that this is an invitation that is not limited to Sunday morning, not limited to 15 or 20 or 30 minutes, but instead is an invitation that is open and extended to you whenever it is that you make up your mind, that you want to say, yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, Lord, to your way. I want you to know this morning, all you need to do is say, God, I surrender my all unto you. And if and when you do that, salvation, salvation belongs to you. It is not something that begins when we die, but it is something that begins the moment that we say, yes, Lord, yes to your will. If you've done that, salvation belongs to you. Be in touch with me and we can talk the more about what it means to grow in your relationship with your God. I invite you to sit, shoot me an email, to give me a call, to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, to connect with us via our website. We want you to know that there is a community called Wesley, and we want to know you more. We want to walk with you, and, and we want to talk with you. We want you to know us just as much as we want to know you. We want you to know that we are a body and a group of people who are doing our best to seek our God every day of our lives. But we are trying to get back to that place from which we all started from. And we want you to join us on that journey. So please connect with us, be in touch with us. Again, our website is wesleychurchsc.com. Go there, learn a little bit more about the Wesley community. There's a link there for a daily devotion. Go and get what you need. Go to our uh, YouTube channel as you have done this morning, as you're watching this worship service. There are services uh, loaded on our YouTube channel from the past several years. Go and replenish your soul. Hear the word of God. Feast on the music that is being sang and, and just hear. Hear how God is speaking to you uh, through um, the preached word, through music ministry, through people who are sharing their own testimony. We want you to know that we love you. But most importantly, we want you to know that God loves you and that God wants you. Now, 
In addition to connecting, if you have a desire to, to give unto the Wesley uh, Church in order that we can continue to do kingdom work, we invite you to, again, go to our webpage, go to Get Connected, and underneath there, the drop-down men, uh, menu, there is a, a place where you can click on Giving. Go there and you can give unto the Wesley Church. Of course, you always can send in your, your, your gift uh, to our physical location, 1725 Gervais Street, Columbia 29202. We thank you so much for your willingness to give and your willingness to continue to support the ministry of Wesley. Now, as we ready ourselves to end our time together, I want to invite you to join me in a closing prayer and benediction. Let us pray together. God, we do love you and we praise you. We thank you so much that your word has gone forth and we trust that it shall never return back void. We thank you, O oh God, for the witness, Lord Jesus, of both the lame man that was by the pool and Junius and so many others that remind us that even when the mess of life surrounds us, that you are the God that can be trusted. We pray, God, as we find ourselves in difficult and as we find ourselves in places where harsh and intrusive things come into our lives, that we are reminded that we are assured that you, oh God, you can be trusted. We love you, God. We honor you and we praise you. We thank you for loving us. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you henceforth now and forevermore. The people of God shall say amen, amen, and amen. If you want to connect with us and on our website at wesleychurchsc.com. You can connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 